Hello, Wesley. If you haven't already done so, take a moment to subscribe or to like the page that you're on. Uh, make sure that you are leaving us a comment or something that lets us know that you're interacting with your church and your church community in some way. I know that it's important during these times to continue to feel connected, and so you can help do that by leaving some kind of comment or, or question perhaps you have uh, that we can get to as a church and as a people. Uh, in this particular segment, I just want to share with you a little bit from an ancient book called Leviticus. And this book was written 3,000 years ago, and it is a great example of a book in the Bible that many people look at and they go, I have no clue why God does this or why this matters. And they kind of dismiss it or skip over it. Or they say something like, well, that's everything wrong with the Bible. And, but so when I pick this book up, however, it's fascinating how many times I can look at that and go, well, these same things that God is speaking about then are still important to us. Just as an example, uh, the famous verse that Christians and others have quoted, love your neighbor as yourself, it's actually found in Leviticus. But one of the things that people complain about about this book is that it's just so filled with details. How could it possibly be relevant? And we've probably all heard the phrase, the devil is in the details. But did you know the original statement was, God is in the details. God is in the details. And I don't know about you, but I think that's one of the things that's so fascinating, is that God is in the small parts of our life as well. Not just the big triumphant moments or the back victories that we see happen in our lives, but rather in the small details of our lives as well. Let me tell you what I mean by, or show you what I mean by the details that are in Leviticus. I'll just give you one example. There's many to be found in this book. But in Leviticus chapter 5, there's some details about how to show God that you're thankful, how to give an offering. And in this particular case, it's talking about how would you give an offering to God and realize at this point, money hadn't been invented. The only way that they would have goods to trade or things that they could use for their own was, well, food, animals, grain, wheat. And so when you were going to give God an offering, a gift, you might use an animal from your herd or your flock. And in chapter 5 it says, if you can't afford an animal from the flock, you can bring to the Lord as compensation for your sin two doves or two pigeons, one as purification offering, and the other as an entirely burned offering. And then it goes on to explain some more details about how you should give a gift to God. How would you show your thanks to God? And we look at that passage and the one that's like it, and we say, that's just incredible detail. I mean, if you couldn't afford a particular animal, then God gives an example or a detail of a substitute. Now, why do the details matter? How do we know God is in the details? Well, I don't know about you, but there are a ton of shows that I have seen, some of which I have watched, that are about home improvement or life improvement. They invade somebody's home, and they find somebody whose life is kind of at a lower level than what they think it should be at. Uh, they find somebody who's perhaps unemployed, who isn't taking care of themselves, who isn't happy with how things are going. And the people who do the show, and I know, I know, the reality shows are all a little questionable, but they begin to work with those people. And, and what do they do? They begin to fix the small details of their life. They begin to help them update their wardrobe. You know, they take them from their 1970s leisure suit and give them the latest fashions. They give them new pants, new belt, new shirt. They groom them. They tell them how to 
dress in a particular way that's going to improve their life, the details. Or if you have somebody that's going through rehab, going through a time in which they're trying to find sobriety, if they check themselves in, what do they do? Well, each morning there's going to be a detailed list of things that that person's going to do. It's not just a matter of go and do what you like, but rather, you know, you're going to eat breakfast at this time. You are going to make sure that you meet with your group at this particular time. Uh, that all throughout the day it's scheduled. There's details for how this is all going to happen. And God is giving these people and us a gift of saying, this is how life could be if you were closer to me. This is how good life could be if more people would, well, give thanks, rejoice in the life that has been given to us. And that bit by bit, detail by detail, our lives become elevated. They grow, they flourish as we grow closer and closer to God. So as you think about your own life, Maybe it is that you've resisted some of the guidance that God has given you. Maybe it is that you're at a certain place in your life and you know that God is calling you to a, a new place, a new day. And what I want to encourage you to do is to consider the details. We all know that when you're in school, the difference between a paper that gets a D and a paper that gets an A is usually detail. What grammatical mistakes did you make? What content did you leave out? And oftentimes, when you go for a job interview or you're trying to make a sale, the details matter greatly. And the same is true with our relationship with God. When we hear Jesus make statements about who do we love or how do we love, it's important that we pay attention to the details. And of course, trust that God is gracious with us, is patient with us, and that is wanting us to take the next step, to do the next thing, because he loves us. Thanks for being with us. Make sure that you do subscribe or that you like, and continue to follow us at Wesley UMC.